Now we're ready to put all our curves together. And what I will show first is a long run equilibrium. So you have your aggregate demand and you have your short run aggregate supply. Wherever those two are equal, wherever those two intersect, I should say, is the equilibrium. It is where you are right now in the economy. It could be a short run equilibrium, since it is the short run aggregate supply curve, or it could be the long run equilibrium. To be a long run equilibrium, you need to have the intersection of aggregate demand and short run aggregate supply curve occur on top of the long run aggregate supply curve. Like so. That will be our long run equilibrium. Okay, so just to give you some context to what that means, it's saying that this is where the economy is at potential GDP. We don't have any cyclical unemployment. All our resources are being used to their capacity. This is the level of output that we should be producing, and we're apparently at the price level. Now, that's just true in general. What we want to do in this video is the static aggregate demand, aggregate supply model. So we're going to make a few assumptions that result in the model being static. <laughs> the point of this model is so we can just focus on how the economy will adjust to recessions and expansions and always come back to this little spot right here. So that's really the point of the model. Um, when we do the dynamic aggregate demand, aggregate supply model, what's going to happen is all our curves are going to be drifting to the right for the most part. Because for the most part, we have economic growth, which we show as showing long run aggregate supply curve shifting to the right. Potential GDP is growing. For the most part, as our potential GDP is growing, our, our ability to produce will also be growing. So it's generally going to the right unless we've had a really na negative, nasty shock. It can go left. Um, and in general, aggregate demand is going to the right. And so I think the reason we do the aggregate, excuse me, the um, static model is because to show a recession, we intuitively think, well, that means aggregate demand goes to the left. And that is correct intuitively. To show a, a <laughs> aggregate demand curve going to the right and still being in a recession, that can be very confusing. So this might make more sense when we get to the dynamic model, but what happens is in a recession, in the dynamic model, aggregate demand goes to the right, but just not quite as far as it would have, not enough to prevent a recession. So those are issues we have to worry about in a later video. Right now, we're just focused on this. So in the static model, we just make two simple assumptions. We assume that there is no long-run growth. So long run aggregate supply curve is going to stay right here at this level of GDP. And in fact, we're just going to call it 10. I guess it could be 10 trillion, it could be 10 billion. But in this economy, there's no growth. And of course, that's not realistic, but it allows us again just to focus on the adjustment process that the economy does. Um, and then, you know, just to be simple, we'll call this price level 100. And so the two assumptions are that there's no real growth, so we're always going to stay here. Our long run aggregate supply curve specifically never moves. And we, there's no expectation of inflation, so we expect just to be at 100. All right, so that's the static model. So now there's three things we want to use it for to demonstrate how it works. The first thing we're going to model is a positive aggregate demand shock. All right, the way you translate that phrase is positive means it's an increasing impact on the curve. The curve it's positively impacting is aggregate demand. And shock is just a word that we use to show that the curve has been shifted. So what we are describing is that. So aggregate demand has been positively shocked. Why might that happen? Well. A lot of reasons it could happen, um, but perhaps there was some poorly timed monetary policy or poorly timed fiscal policy, which has ended up causing aggregate demand to increase when we really did not need it to right there. Um, but we don't have to worry about why it happened. We want to show how the economy will fix itself. So what this means then is right now, this is the equilibrium. We were at this lovely long run equilibrium, and now we've had this shock this might help you understand the short run aggregate supply curve a little bit more than when we looked at it in isolation. 
um, in the long run, we will end up up here. So if prices were flexible, we would simply move from, let's go ahead and give this a little label, we would move from point A right on up to point C um, because there would just be this instantaneous reaction that, oh, the price level has risen. We just need to raise prices on everything, and we don't need to um, accidentally take this increase in aggregate demand as a true need to produce more. We just need to raise prices enough so that we'll still produce $10 trillion. That would be instantaneous adjustment. That's not how the economy works. It takes us a while to recognize what's going on. And so we're going to actually end up at a point like B. And so when we talk about the automatic adjustment process, we are talking about how the economy gets from B back to the long run, okay? So let's discuss how that happens. So we were at point A at a price level of 100. All of a sudden you wake up, you're at this higher price level. Oh my gosh, I did not expect this. Um, how do I correct this? How do I react to it really is the point. And so what's going to happen is the people are going to realize that a couple of things are going on here. Unemployment is very low because remember, this is full employment. So we've pushed our employment of our resources and our labor beyond capacity. So people are going to realize they can demand higher wages. At the same time, they're going to realize they need to, high, to have higher wages because the prices are higher. So as they demand higher wages, as their expectation of the price level grows from here to where they are, the short-run aggregate supply curve will react. So with so you will have short-run aggregate supply curve decreasing until it is hitting the long-run aggregate supply curve at the long-run equilibrium, which is right there. So you have a decrease in the short-run aggregate supply curve because as they recognize that prices are higher now, any one level of GDP needs to be associated with a higher cost of production. So what's important here, if you want to just summarize it, is we started at point A, something happened to cause a positive aggregate demand shock, so we went to point B, and the automatic adjustment mechanism, that's the phrase you want to use, that's the phrase the book uses, the automatic adjustment mechanism is the recognition of higher cost will cause short-run aggregate supply curve to adjust, and we will go back Eventually, by definition, we will always come back to the long run and be at point C. So this positive aggregate demand shock in the long run has no impact on our output. We will still be producing the same output. However, we will now be doing it at some higher price level. In addition to showing us the automatic adjustment mechanism, how the economy will fix itself when it is shocked, the other thing that's really good about this model is it allows us to show that there's actually two kinds of recessions. And what we're going to look here is what we would call the normal or typical recession, and that's the negative aggregate demand shock. So given what we said last time, negative is the direction the curve's going to go, so it's going to go to the left. Aggregate demand is a curve that's being affected, and shock just means the curve shifted. So we're going to end up with something like that, where aggregate demand has decreased or shifted to the left. So if we are starting from long run equilibrium, then we are starting at point A. But when we had this negative aggregate demand shock, we have now ended up at point B. So point A is a long run equilibrium, point B is a short run equilibrium. The long run equilibriums are where aggregate demand, short run aggregate supply curve are equal on top of the long run aggregate supply curve, and a short run is where they're just equal to each other, but they're either to the left or the right of long run aggregate supply curve. All right, so we're at point B. And some of the reasons this might have happened could have been a, um, a decrease in the confidence of the consumers or the businesses, and they cut back consumption or they cut back investment. Um, something like that might have occurred. And so now here we are at point A, point B, excuse me. But it's time for our automatic adjustment mechanism. Let's get back to long run. So it's going to be the same mechanism in that it's still going to be that expectation of the price level. It's always that expectation that is driving the correction, which means it's always a short run aggregate supply curve that is adjusting to the shock. 
all right? It's always the short run, aggregate supply curve adjusting to the shock. So let's think about what's happening here. We were happily going along at point A, you wake up one day, you're at point B, and the prices are lower and the um, economy is in a recession. And I, I can be pretty sure we're in a recession because look, we're at below potential GDP. Uh, we're not using all our resources. We have unemployment. All of those things are implied when you're at an equilibrium to the left of long run aggregate supply curve. All right, so here we are at point B and um, you know, you're unemployed if you're one of the unlucky ones. So if you actually, um, get a job or find a job you could take, you'd be willing to take it for a lower wage. If you actually one of the lucky ones who are employed, not the time to start demanding wage increases, right? And in fact, you might be willing to accept lower wages. Um, and so we can actually eventually realize, oh, well, we are at a lower price level. So I can, I can react to that. I can plan for that. I don't have to demand higher wages. Lower wages are just fine because prices are actually lower. Um, I realize it's not completely realistic to our world because our world's a little more complicated than this, but rather than saying you would be willing to accept a lower wage, which is what this model shows us, we could interpret that to mean I'd be willing to accept a smaller cost of living adjustment because I realize that inflation has been slowed down. But anyway, back to the model, we can actually see that the price level is lower than we expected. This would actually be deflation. And as that becomes um, realized, we will see the expectation of prices is lower. That's an increase in the short run aggregate supply curve. And that will continue until again, we are back at the long run aggregate supply curve. We are back at a long run equilibrium. All right, so I said that this was the typical recession. And what I mean by that is you see lower GDP, lower price level, that's the key, and unemployment. The last thing we want to look at is the not typical recession where you can actually end up with inflation and unemployment. All right, our last case will be the negative short run aggregate supply shock. So it's short run aggregate supply curve is being knocked over to the left. And probably the most uh, common example of this would be the sudden increase in the price of oil. So you kind of get a sense now of why we learned all those things that shift the curve. So if that happens, we have a sudden increase in the price of oil, we have a hit to our short run aggregate supply curve. And so now we are in a recessionary environment because we are lower real GDP. We are to the left, therefore, I mean, we are to the left of our long run aggregate supply curve, which indicates we're not at potential GDP, we're not at full employment, we have unemployment. And uh-oh, look at this, we have inflation. And so this is called stagflation. Stagflation is when you have both unemployment and inflation. So that is not typical. The typical recession is one we just did, and this is the scary one, as we will see when we get to monetary and fiscal policy. This is the one that scares the policymakers because their policy tools don't have a good solution for this. But all we want to worry about right now is how does the economy get out of this? Now... <laughs> Remember that the uh, automatic adjustment mechanism is always going to be the short-run aggregate supply curve adjusting. So if we were beyond potential GDP, the short-run aggregate supply curve decreased until we came back to it. If we were to the left of it, we had decreased aggregate demand, then short-run aggregate supply curve increased until we were back to it. Well, it's still going to be the short-run aggregate supply curve adjusting here, but this is going to be a slow, painful process. So what's going to happen is you find yourself here. You do want to demand higher wages if you're working because everything costs more, but there's all this unemployment. So you really can't. And then the people who are unemployed would be willing to take lower wages just because even though things are expensive, something's better than nothing, right? So you have this sort of painful process where even though things actually are costing more, the unemployment almost kind of wins out, and so people will start accepting lower wages. And so the correction is the short-run aggregate supply curve will just return. So here you started at point A, you ended up at point B after the oil price increased, and over some slow, painful adjustment process, we will actually just go back to A. So in this case, um, we just had the short-run aggregate supply curve decrease and then eventually find its way back.
Um, but what I want you to realize with all three of these cases, no matter what the shock was, positive aggregate demand shock, negative and aggregate demand shock, or a negative short run aggregate supply shock, we always see the correction coming from the short run aggregate supply curve. And it's coming because of this realization of what's going on with the price level versus what I expected. All right, that wraps up the static model. So let's move on to the dynamic model.